Now today is a very special day. This is what is known as Good Friday. And we want to take a little bit more time as we have this video to discuss the events of the arrest of Jesus and then the crucifixion of Christ. So I'm going to read from the book of the Gospel of John, the, the arrest of Jesus in uh, chapter 18 verses 1 through 12. And then I'll read the verses regarding the crucifixion of Jesus in John chapter 19, verses 17 through 37. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the book, book of Kindron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Who are you seeking? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said that I, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he had said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. And then he asked them again, Whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spoke. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malachus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup? which my Father has given to me. And so we see the arrests, and uh, of course uh, the other Gospels go into great detail regarding this event, that Judas did in fact betray Jesus for the money that he was promised. We see the um, troops coming, many more people than were needed to come and arrest Jesus. He willingly um, gave his life. Uh, he could have called 10,000 angels and stopped the whole thing, but he knew for the purposes of why he had come, what he was facing, fully committed to fulfill the plan that the Holy Trinity had before the foundation of the earth, that Jesus is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth for the sins of the human race. And so we see Peter in his uh, aggressiveness to try to help prevent this event from occurring trying to stop it, come to Jesus' rescue, uh, cut off the ear of Malachus, and we, we realize that uh, uh, Jesus was gracious to this uh, servant and uh, healed his uh, ear immediately, and he also was merciful to his disciples, he gave them a chance to run, which they did, they took off. So Jesus went alone to the next event uh, that he would now begin to uh, give his life for the sake of all of us. So now we're going to read about the crucifixion in John chapter 19, verses 17 through 37. The crucifixion of Christ. And he bearing his cross went out to a place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Gogotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore the chief priests and the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews. But he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each soldier apart, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. They said, therefore, among themselves, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things, now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. 
After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Therefore, because it was the preparation day, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. For these things were done, that the scriptures should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And again another scripture says, They shall look on him whom they have pierced. And so this very difficult section of scripture to personally read to you and to meditate upon and reflect upon is one of the the most horrific events in human history. This is the God who created us, who gave himself for us, that told us in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The gospel of Jesus Christ being seen in living color in these verses Many of you at this time of year watch different films that depict the crucifixion of Christ very vividly. I've never personally been able to watch these films because they just crush me beyond uh, my human emotional ability to cope with. It's enough for me just to read these scriptures and reflect upon the torture that Jesus went through for us. And the other Gospels depict these things in very graphic terms. John uh, graciously gave us the, um, the Cliff Notes versions in some ways of what he personally witnessed because he was at the foot of the cross with Mary, um, John, the beloved disciple. And he wrote these things as a witness that these things are true. He told us in the book of 1 John as well, chapter 5, verse 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life by believing on the name of the Son of God. And as I sit here before you and read these things, I have this overwhelming sense of God's presence and spirit with me as I endeavor to share these things with you. What does it mean to me? What does it mean to you that Jesus bled and died and gave his very life for a sinner and a wretch such as me? I reflect on these things as I read this scripture and I think of his love for me and for you and for everyone in this world and that he gave himself and there's a plan to deliver us all from the pressure and the torture of human existence that occurs in times such as we're going through right now that there's a plan before the foundation of the earth in the midst of the great crises that have happened in human history, such as a flood when every human being died in the waters because of the horrific nature of the human heart, thinking evil continually. Everywhere God looked at that time upon the heart of the human race, he saw man's thoughts being continual, continually wicked. He promised he would never destroy the world that way again. And he allowed the earth to be fruitful and replenish again through Noah and his family. But we haven't really become any better than those that were living in the pre-flood time. Again, God has to, many times throughout history, break into the human race with great difficulty and crisis and tragedy in order to bring us back to our senses that we might turn back to him and ask him to have mercy on us and forgive us In this time that we're in presently, many are coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Many are asking questions. 
why are we having this difficult time in this coronavirus season? And the only answer we can give to people, the only hope, the only truth is found in the scriptures. We can't reason in and among ourselves because our knowledge is limited. But God's truth is perfect and eternal and unlimited. And so we see what our Savior went through. And we then get our eyes upon Him and off ourselves and our present situation or circumstances, realizing that He went through this horror that we would have the promise and forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. And so this is a wonderful day to take the Lord's Supper together. This is a day to remember Him again, very specifically. I'm going to ask Dan to get the Lord's Supper for me as he's filming this, so I can take it with you and he can take it with me as well. Uh, We have time to do this together. Um, And it it takes on an even deeper significance when you read these scriptures. And I would encourage you uh, to gather your family together and take the supper on Good Friday uh, as a family. Uh, I would encourage you to spread this uh, video around to other people on Friday when it comes out so you can encourage others to take the supper uh, as we take it together. And, um, And we can just sort of take some time as we're before the Lord right now to allow him to examine our hearts. Uh, The Bible says that it's important that we first examine ourselves. And so in this season of of God's chastening, and he's getting our attention as a human race, and getting my attention as well, uh, the, the Bible tells us the heart is deep. And there's many things that are down deep inside. Even though we've trusted Christ and we've received him as our Savior, and we've been born again and we've been saved, there's still more work to do in, in our hearts. And in times and in seasons of adversity and difficulty, we're more open to allow the Lord to show us things in our lives that need to be uh, dealt with, and need to be actually rooted out of our hearts at the very core. Uh, relationship issues that we can try to be reconciled to. Um, issues in our own family that we can ask one another for forgiveness for. That we would never be the same kind of people moving forward, not only because of the adversity we're in with the virus, but understanding what Christ has done for us. And he tells us in his Lord's Prayer that we ask him to forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed or sinned against us. He tells us later that if we don't forgive others their trespasses, neither will he forgive us of ours. So it's very important every time we take the supper is to remember if there's any offense that we have against someone else, we need to let it go and forgive people as Christ has forgiven us. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, Let all bitterness and wrath and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you, and be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So let's take a moment to just reflect in God's presence right now, the Holy Spirit showing us what it is we need to surrender and give to Him. And then we'll take the Lord's Supper together. Father, it's a wonderful thing that we can come before your throne of grace. It tells us in Hebrews that we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. And then it tells us that we can enter in boldly to the throne room of grace by a new and living way which he's consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and that we might come boldly into this throne room of grace, that we might find mercy and grace and help in our time of need. Lord Jesus, we are at your feet now, holding the cup and the bread in our hands. 
ready to again remember what you have done for us what you've given for us your body and your shed blood we understand more clearly the life-giving aspect of this blessed remembrance that we have even now with these elements you've given us that represent your body and your shed blood lord thank you for the privilege that you've given us lord to fellowship and commune with you in such an intimate and personal way with you father son and holy spirit and also to commune with brothers and sisters our family one another in christ lord we truly take seriously your admonition in the lord's prayer that we ask you to forgive us of our trespasses and we know you do you tell us if we confess our sins you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness we thank you for this lord for forgiving us and then lord the privilege you give us to forgive others who have sinned against us and we do forgive one another lord it's so wonderful it's so liberating it's so cleansing it's so freeing to to be able to do this from the bottom of our hearts we're thankful lord that your blood cleanses us presently eternally from all our sin we're thankful lord that you make us white as snow and you renew us and you refresh us and so lord i thank you for all those who are gathered together right now with this video lord that we can take this together and celebrate your death your burial your resurrection even on this day that history represents good friday may you be merciful we know you are as the man said lord jesus christ have mercy upon me a sinner you truly are a merciful god and what that means is lord be to be to us the way you always are merciful on the night jesus was betrayed he took the bread in his hands he broke it and he gave thanks and he said take eat this is my body which is broken for you eat this in remembrance of me the same manner in that night he took the cup and he said this cup is a new covenant in my blood which was shed for the forgiveness of sins of many drink this in remembrance of me For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you show forth the Lord's death till he comes. A wonderful word at the end of the book of Revelation says, Maranatha it means come quickly, Lord Jesus. And may we all be looking forward to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you on the next video update.